That's it, man. All right, let's get it. So for those of you who may not know, Taylor Fredericks, filmmaker, actor, musician, man, you're in the uh, tribute band and such. Say in a terrible world, we end up with these things not working out and you end up unhoused and on the street. What do you think you're gonna make your cardboard sign to kind of convince people to throw you a hand? <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question, dude. I feel like I've always found a way to not get to that point. And there's definitely been so, moments so. where it feels like it's treading that line a bit. Mm. It's where it's like, okay, like, I mean, growing up as a musician and pursuing original music for 14 years of my life, and then realizing like, man, like I'm not feeling creative anymore. I'm, mm. I feel like the, the best, time, best music I've ever written was about heartbreak and, you know, tragedy and I'm like man like do I have to be sad all the time to write good music it's and like I was the just, weekend dude that's just like I can't, I can't do that anymore man and so that's when I switched over to filmmaking where you can really invent and cope through that medium in any form you know comedy drama horror whatever you're feeling and it's like I don't know I've gotten to a certain point even with filmmaking and taking the risk coming here where I didn't have a job when I moved here. I didn't have a place to live right when I moved here. I was wow. couch surfing, you know, for a couple of months. Um, and then eventually I moved in with a roommate, but like didn't have a job, but then eventually got, got a job, worked my way up. It was at Alma Draft House and was a server there. And then it got to a certain point where they had an opening for a culinary videography position. You said culinary videography. Yeah, dude. So what it was is essentially they have all the new drink and food, item, food items that came out for the menu. Okay. Um, I would be the one creating all the videos for like training purposes. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so after a few month interview process of that, which I don't have a degree, I have a portfolio that is extensive, but never got a degree. I was a college dropout, but back home in Fort Wayne, Indiana, they didn't give a shit. They, if you, they saw that you didn't have a degree, then they didn't give a shit what your portfolio looked like. Come here, you know, as a filmmaker and instantly get, you know, accepted into Alamo, get hired and accepted into Alamo Draft House back in 2017. It was like, wow, it was, like, it was just so welcoming and inviting. And then eventually after a few months process, like, oh, once this job came up, a few months process of the interview, it was like, I ended up getting the job and it was like, okay, finally my first corporate video gig. And then eventually just hustle and hustle, freelancing, editing, videography, whichever, while still creating my own shit. And I feel like, you know, there's always a, there's always a way, man. And there's as much, man. as much as tough, you know, shit gets tough sometimes, man. It's, I feel like it's trying to teach us something, but it helps us, you know, get to a certain point where it's like, okay, you need to learn this lesson. And then eventually it all ends up working out because you can't have... You can't have the good without the bad. You gotta, yeah. you gotta grow from it. Now, would you say, I've heard a saying, and I've personally felt this in my life, and I'm curious if you agree. I heard a saying once that lessons are taught until they're learned. Their lessons are taught over and over again by the universe until you pick up the fucking phone and answer and get the message. Would you be, uh, would you agree with that saying or have anything to add to that? Oh, I agree with that 100%, man, because there's definitely a lot of times where it's like, whether it be relationships or whether, you know, whatever it may be, it's like, keep repeating the same patterns until you figure yeah. the shit out until, you know, and it's like, man, a lot of reflection and being open to reflection and being able to realize that you're not perfect, you know, everyone's got their own shit. Oh, and Lord, no. I do agree with that statement 100% because there's definitely been times where I've caught, felt like I've been caught in this cycle and it just keeps yeah. repeating and repeating and repeating. So I finally was like, let me take a step back. Let me figure out and realize why this is happening. Why am I essentially going through this Groundhog Day over and yes, over again? Yes, exactly. And break <laughs> through it. And, and there's definitely times where I've had that, you know, that revelation where it hit me and I'm like, that's it, you know? I certain, see the pattern. Just like Groundhog Day, I'm gonna take, <laughs> I'm gonna do something that switches up the damn script. That's what I'm saying, dude. Because this movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> how has learning acting changed how you interact or interface with the world? 
Acting for me, man, it's like I started I started loving it when I was in high school and it was like this outlet where it was like I felt like I can be myself to a certain mm. extent where I can portray that within somebody else. Like, okay, so for instance, during COVID, I did a character web series or I, or I portrayed this character, Jimmy Arcurio, who was a beer kind of store from Chicago. He talked like this from beat all the little craft beers on the market today, you know? That, <laughs> yeah, was his, perfect. that was his whole spiel. And like, he was, he's such an outgoing character. And mm. of course it's, it's, it's me acting as this character, but it's also essentially letting out this person that I keep bottled in at times mm. where it's like, I'm afraid to be myself at times. I'm afraid to show the world who I truly am. And then it's like, all right, I get to be this character where the only thing that's different with this character is the way he dressed and these fucking aviator regular like, glasses, you know? And it's like, that's the only thing different. And it just reminds me of uh, Big Daddy with, uh, you seen Big Daddy, uh, right? With the Adam Sandler, right? Yeah, dude. Yeah, and yeah. one of the scenes in there was like, hey, put on these sunglasses, you know, if you're afraid, you know? He puts on the sunglasses mm -hmm. and then he feels comfortable. He feels comfortable being around other people. He feels like he can be himself, even though it's like everyone can see him, he still acts like nobody else can see him and he can just open up and be whoever the hell he wants. You know, acting as different characters, it's like, yeah, you portray somebody else, but then again, it opens up this, this level inside you that you wouldn't open up otherwise, right? Yeah. Because essentially, you're not being yourself because you're portraying somebody else, but you get to essentially be a caricature of your own, of your own person mind. you yeah. know what i'm saying your own mind i remember the first time i watched you perform <laughs> i think you smashed a fucking guitar on the ground oh dude that was a live oak show yeah i remember that. dude i've always wanted to do that <laughs> i've always wanted to just bash the guitar into the ground so on the heels of that let me ask you this i always find that there's creative overlap between the different activities i have for example i found that being interested in skateboarding has helped me mm. act better and being interested in acting has helped me make videos better because I can understand more pieces of it. Do you feel like being involved in music, especially like a metal band like you're in, and uh -huh. then being an actor, do you think the two have overlap? So starting off as a musician, I started off when I was 12 years old. I started booking and playing my own coffee shop gigs and I'd play solo gigs for like two hours and I'd have like five shows a month doing that at 12. Wow. And at that, 12? At 12. And I was doing that for a few years, I ended up having multiple bands, but what I've learned through that whole process was not only persistence, dedication, but like also marketing and promoting mm. myself and figuring out new ways to bring it out to a new audience, whatever it may be. And I think I've carried that over into filmmaking that I probably wouldn't have learned otherwise. So I think that's the biggest thing I'd take in from a musician standpoint is just like the marketing and promoting um, aspect of it because mm. I don't think I would have learned it otherwise, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what we've been kind of doing with, uh, w even with Basil King, bro, is like, we're bringing it back to like the R-rated comedies of like the early 2000s that we've loved so yeah. much. And, you know, a lot of those movies don't hold up today because of cancel culture. <laughs> yeah. You know, people are <laughs> easily offended, but it's like, yo, it's comedy. It's like, no one's trying to harm anybody. Like, it's just like, everyone needs to, again, they're so attached to this thing and it's like, hey, you know, uh, oh, this is offensive. I was like, is it offending you? Well, no. Well, then how is it offensive to you? Well, it could be offensive to that person. Did you ask that person? Like, like you're getting stressed out about someone else's potential stress. Exactly. Like, what was it? So during the shooting of uh, Jimmy Arquero, Rebel Without a Beer. Oh, yes. Um, my buddy Sean, who's also in Basil King, he, he's, he's, he, he's a white guy, but he plays. He, He's like Emilio Gonzalez, and he talks like this, you know, and he talks like a, a sure. Mexican, you okay. know, and and like it was so funny we were doing it because it, it was great, but that's the thing. It was like we were on set, and our our director for for it, also white, hmm. looks around. He's like, wait, he's like, is this racist? And then we had no. our DP, no. my buddy Ryan, and another, one of the actors, Duvall, who are all Mexican. They're laughing their asses off. They're like, no, this is hilarious. Like, like no, <laughs> you know. So I think it's just. So we're, that's what we're trying to do with, with Basil King is we're trying to like step out of the box and you know essentially I guess getting to the point is where it's like, hey, if people find it funny, cool. If people don't find it funny, 
who gives a shit? Because we find okay. it funny. You know, <laughs> we find it funny, and that's what, the reason why mm -hmm. we're making it. You know. Can you think of one of the first men in your life that demonstrated what healthy masculinity looked like? Hmm. And if so, can you tell me how they did that? That's an interesting question, man, because like, honestly, most of my family consists of women, you know? My dad, growing up, he, you know, he was a musician. That made me want to be a musician. Hmm. Uh, he was also the same figure in my life that became, that showed me comedy, grew me up on all the freaking Fairly Brothers films, Happy Madison films. Um, SNL, like I grew up with oh, all yeah. that, and like without that, I don't think my humor would be nearly the same. Mm. And I think that's, you know, and he was, you know, my dad was such a goofy guy, and I feel like I definitely got a lot of that from him. You know, there was a time in my life where it was just him raising my sister and I, mm. you know, and like, there was definitely times where it was hard, you know, and I knew it was hard, I knew it was struggling. I mean, you know, he never gave up, you know, he still tried, mm. you know, he still tried and tried. And even though him and, I, him and I have had our differences, it's still, you know, it still doesn't negate the fact of how much he's done for me in my life, even if we don't, you know, really talk that much anymore. And then I guess the other one, like it was my grandfather, my dad's dad, who was a prominent figure growing up that I would see him every, every holiday. Okay. He was taking me to my two days when I played football, like, he was just, you know, always there at all my games, everything, and then it got to, you know, once he ended up passing away, it was just like, it was like, it, it broke me, man. It was like, it was, because he was just this lovable energy, and I know it's interesting hearing about the stories with him, him and my dad growing up, and they didn't have the same bond, but like, you know, his dad and me, my grandpa and me, had this special bond. Yeah. That it was just like, he was so loving, he was so supportive, you know, so it was just like once he left, I even, one of my first films I did was an ode to him. And it was, you know, one of the songs I wrote was an ode to him. It taught, it taught me a lot growing up and it's, you know, I'd, so I'd say those two, my dad and my grandpa, were the biggest figures in my life from a masculinity wow. standpoint. And, and just, I guess, from a male figure growing up, so, you know. They were close. Yeah. Man, thank you for sharing that with me. And it's a lot of it's yeah. a lot of it's um, represented in impermanence, my film impermanence, so so that's why it's so yeah. vulnerable to me and it's just like man, it's just it's not a comedy, it's a drama, it's me essentially playing myself. It's very heavily inspired by Honey Boy with Shia. Okay. Um, where that was very semi-autobiographical for his life. This is very semi-autobiographical for me. So it's, uh, yeah, it's one of those things I'm like, ah, it's like I'd like to put it on the world, but it's also this very vulnerable. And I'm, I'm, I'm a very open and honest person, but even Worth putting it. that out there, like, hey, here's the past. And this is why I became this fucked up, broken person who's trying to rebuild. Um, yeah. It stemmed from this, this trauma, this childhood trauma growing up. So it's... You know, it's a very beautiful film that I'm just like super yeah. proud of and super stoked to to shoot at some point. So I hope so very much that it gets made. Oh, I will. It like, will. Like it doesn't sound like there's anything that's gonna get in the way of that. Yeah. And hey, thank you for sharing, man. Yeah, I did. Really do like. Yeah, bro. For real, man. <laughs> With that being said, Taylor Fredericks, man, absolute stand-up guy. Speaking of stand-up guys, if you have anybody else you think I should have a conversation with, please tag them down below. It would mean the world to me. That being said, thank you for your time and have a wonderful day.